Well, for more on the effort to rescue those girls and, of course, the threat that is posed by Boko Haram, I spoke a short time ago with Peter Pham. He's the director of the Atlantic Council's Africa program. As John was saying there, the missing schoolgirls have focused attention on Nigeria, but actually the war with Boko Haram has been getting more brutal over the last couple of years, and actually no one's paid it very much attention, not even the Nigerian government. That's right, and that's the real tragedy. Just in the month of March alone, uh, analysts estimate that well over 3,000 Nigerians died in political violence, most of it attributable to Boko Haram attacks, government counterattacks, or indeterminate crossfire between the two. You've written that the Nigerian government must take on Boko Haram, admit there's a problem, but you've also said that military force is a blunt instrument. So what should they be doing? Well, they have to do... First, there is a military response. Certainly, if you see militant forces grouping for an attack, one has to respond to that. But one also has to provide basic security for people. Otherwise, they're not going to feel safe in providing information, intelligence to the government, and in fact, they'll be intimidated by the terrorists. They also have to work on development, economic and political inclusion. These are people who, as John just mentioned, feel very much excluded by Nigeria, a country which is now recognized as Africa's largest economy. So what exactly, in terms of security, can the military do? I mean, should they be going into towns like the one we just saw when they get information? And is that what they're failing to do? Well, uh, one, well, there are several questions. One, are they getting the information? And when they get the information, are there sufficient numbers of them uh, to respond? And in many cases, they're not deployed in a manner in which they could respond. And then there are some very serious allegations made by a number of groups that even where they have the information and the troops available, that the troops don't respond. And part of that may be that they're sympathetic to Boko Haram, but I think a large part of it may be that there's a lot of corruption. The money doesn't trickle down, so the rank-and-file soldier who's not being paid, who's under-resourced, isn't going to feel up to risking his life for this. Peter, do you think now the Nigerian government's prepared to do some sort of deal with Boko Haram on the schoolgirls? Well, the Nigerian government is caught between a rock and a hard place. On the one hand, if it doesn't strike some sort of a conversation with Boko Haram, it runs the risk of having these close to 300 girls lost forever or killed or whatever. On the other hand, if it talks to Boko Haram, it gives it the recognition that Boko Haram has sought and which the government has denied it up to now. So either way, President Goodluck Jonathan, who's up for re-election less than a year, uh, is damned if he does and he's damned if he doesn't. Nigeria in a very difficult position and part of it of its own making. Peter Farms, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you, Kenny.